Today, I want to work on this defender right here. The defender has one ability called to win slash that does damage and another ability called intervene that is above on friendly units. What I want to do today though is create another ability that does bleed because the defender is all about defense and bleed. And so I thought about an uh, ability that looks something like this. What should we name the ability? What about Wolf Scratch? I was thinking about Yamcha, Wolf Fang Fist. The way this works in my game is for every ability, I have an Enum. I'm gonna call it Wolf Fang Fist for now. In honor of the mighty Yamcha. The weakest of the Z characters. If you guys have any idea what could be a better name, feel free to let me know as well. Okay, so this is how an ability looks in my game. We have some sort of ID. That is uh, what type of ability it is. And then there's a bunch of data that we need to fill in. And I think we should start with the sprite for the ability. That's what it looks like as an icon in game. So for example, this guy has the wind slash icon. I think I want to draw something like the scratch mark here i think this looks good now we just need to make them a little thicker because we like it thick right boys so i drew a thicker version of the claw and was very pleased with the result okay so this is the scratch mark that i'm thinking of and now the important part is i don't know exactly how to rotate it let's say we have one here and he attacks up we need to rotate that scratch mark right but let's first put the scratch mark in a good position okay now that we have the scratch mark we need to add it to the game we do that with the assets for every asset we need to create an enum id Okay, we call it Wolf Fang Slash. And the way this works in my engine is I have to supply the Atlas offset and the sprite size. And so, for example, for this sprite, it is positioned on 848 by 176. So 848 by 176 is where that is. And then we obviously created a 32 by 32 sprite. Let's see how this Wolf Fang Slash looks like when we use it in game. All right, let's give him Wind Slash. Okay, that actually doesn't look that bad. Now the question is, how is it correctly rotated? Is this the correct rotation? Hmm, okay. Hmm, I think it's not correctly rotated. I think if I want it to be rotated correctly, it needs to look like this, unfortunately. So we, oh, actually that looks good. That's exactly what I want. All right, now that we have how it looks, we actually need to implement it the same way that we did with the buff for the sword. I think it's best to start with the function to actually create abilities. So in this function, I create an ability on the stack and then I fill in the data. For example, if we take a look at this blazing touch, I just give it a name. I put in an ability description and then I set some data and some stats. And so we need to do the same thing for the latest ability that we have added. And I usually like to do that at the bottom here. We can use the intervene ability as like a template. This is a wolf fang fist ability. First, I added the name of the ability using my own kind of scuffed version of a localization system. We also want to have a sprite. That's basically the icon that is shown on the bar. For the icon, I tried to replicate the claw that I used for the ability. I also experimented with a hand covered in blood, but it didn't really work out. In the end, I decided to make a bloody slash and I think it looks really good. Now we can actually see the icon and in the name on the ability when we display wolf fang fist in order to test if it actually exists we can go into this kill tree and this is where we can edit some nodes for example this node right here we can change the type to be a skill and then we can decide which skill it will be and here at the very bottom you see we have the wolf fang fist you can already see the name wolf fang fist has a cooldown of two seconds and a duration of 10 seconds now obviously that is totally wrong and we need to change this data now okay this is where it gets interesting the ability has stats and every single stat can change based on what type of ability i use for example we have a list of stats right here we have health energy and there you can see a bleed chance a bleed damage so all of those are very important for this attack we actually want to use all of these stats if we take a look at the scratch ability which is an ability that skeletons use every time they get close to one of my units they use their ability after deciding which stats I wanted to use for the ability, which was attack, bleed chance and bleed damage, I then needed to come up with a description. We need to write a description that encapsulates all of this. We probably don't need the bleed chance because we will just put in the description that it will bleed. Again, I used my own localization system for text to write a description that encapsulates how much damage and bleed damage the ability does. 
And then I got a chance to test it out in game. Let's see what it looks like. I wonder if I have to restart the game or if it just works. Scratch a close enemy dealing 68 physical damage. Okay, so the percentage needs to go. 68 physical damage inflicting a bleeding debuff that deals 88 damage. Now that we have the ability in the game, we also need to tell it, well, what happens when we activate it. First and foremost, we're going to attack the target. And then I also want to create an effect. So I wrote the code to create an effect whenever we slash towards the enemy that would display the scratch that we drew earlier. Okay, guys, let's see. This is our first test. Wolf Fang Fist. Oh, it draws the scratch properly. That's nice. But it didn't inflict bleeding. I also noted that the effect looked kind of bad because it was always behind the enemy if they walked down. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> On top of that, it was locked to the sword, which made it feel wrong in a way. So I thought it would be better if we just lock it to the enemy. Could just be the, the origin of the target. For that, I had to rotate the slash back a little bit so it looked better. And on top of that, I decided to update the sprite and make it much more bloody by adding in a bunch of blood splatters around it. Oh yeah. I also tried making the slash black and keeping the red blood splatter, which also looked good. And finally, I decided to use a white outline together with a black slash to make it pop out even more. In the end, I stuck with the white outline and black slash. Here's a comparison of each version, and I think all of them look great. But if you guys have any idea, feel free to let me know. Now, this is the cool thing about the ability, now that it is finally done. You see how it's dealing 68 physical damage? Well, what if we take this sword right here, the wooden sword that gives us 20 attack? To explain what happened here, I was expecting the 68 physical damage to update itself to more damage since I used the sword that deals more damage. It should give me more damage. Where the fuck do these come from? Huh? Hey! <laughs> what the fuck? Where did these guys come from? <laughs> huh? And unfortunately, this is the part that happens to me every day where after two to three hours of coding, a mysterious weird bug happens that I then have to fix for about an hour. And for some reason, it happens every single day. It's because this ability is not trained yet. We can't actually physically train this ability if we wanted to. I shouldn't even display those because I don't have them unlocked on the skill tree. This is the root ability. And so that one has one out of five. These ones have zero out of five. Uh, so it was a dumb mistake like that. Okay, let's just turn this into a root and this one not. Save. The cool thing is now, if we buy a sword, we deal 102 physical damage. This is the Reaper. Oh yeah. Now that, 170 damage. Anyways, this was a day of game development on Twitch. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more. It tells me that you guys like this type of content and I should continue making it. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.